All right, here we go. Devastation Evoker, 200 item level in a heroic dungeon. The strength of the Devastation Evoker is ridiculous AoE damage. Let the bloodshed begin! Uh, so we can do this, do this, do this. Look at our buddies real quick here. How unexpected! It seems our little pump. 221 on the hunter. 239 on the elemental shaman. Was this a marksman hunter? Yeah, marksman hunter. Uh they're supposed to get a 10% damage buff tomorrow. Look what we have here! I am out of range. Fresh meat! Is he gonna grab them all? Yeah. So that means we do this. Cool. Our tank going. It's uh, making this a little more complicated than it needs to be. I guess our tank's overgeared enough to do this, but he's making it a lot harder on the uh, healer. I fit there. So yeah, Devastation Evoker is uh, a new class, obviously. Like I said, it does lots of AoE damage. Has a 
tougher time on the single target damage. Silda is okay. If you have the uh, the right talents and you're using uh, your Dragon Rage 2 minute cooldown in single target. If you're not using your Dragon Rage in single target, then single target damage is pretty bad. Mortal lives are like so for a DPS bleeding. class. Too so far fragile. Dead. Did a lot of damage, but I almost died. <laughs> oh, did our healer? Where's the healer? Healer's AFK. Yeah, so the Drakthir Evoker is a freaking race class combo. Can't be an Evoker without being a Drakthir. Uh, so, it's kind of a, uh, ooh, that hurt. I underestimated that damage. Our healer is just lost. I'm hoping this shaman reses me. Apparently not. There we go. We got a new healer. Don't get killed by a tornado. Oh, 
All right. Go target. We want to disintegrate a couple times. We want to do the dragon rage thing. We want to fire breath. We want to do the other charge thing. And then we want to. Oh shit. That sucks. Why is he picking on me? I must get close. I wonder if that deep breath made me immune to the soul getting sucked out of me. That was weird. thought maybe it would work, but I was still surprised that it seemed like it might have worked. Guess we're gonna press the big button. Other big button, and the other big button, and some AOE big buttons. One of these got lots of value out of our big buttons. Item on one of this. Two eighty one. You had best make this interesting. A little bit over geared. Fall before the storm. Okay. Power before my might. No PvP for me. Chamber. 
It's time to begin the main event! Soldiers of Maldraxxus! Are you ready for some carnage? Our rising stars now face the longest reigning champion the theater of pain has ever known! Ordretha, the Endless Empress! At long last, a worthy contender! My magic reaches beyond your mortal ken. What am I doing? Death itself demands your songs. Shall be swept into oblivion. All things must end. Yes, Moldrefa has been defeated. I can hardly believe it. The new champion. All right, so. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't quite what I was hoping for as far as things go, but it's getting harder and harder to not find or to get a group in a dungeon that doesn't have somebody uh, who's mega overgeared for it. So, let's see, boss damage. With the Devastation Evoker. Uh, so the first fight is the three boss guys together. Uh, because the Devastation Evoker is really good at AoE damage. Uh, we do very good damage on that fight. We look at Gore Chop. There's a couple adds and the tank dragged a couple adds into the room. So, there's a bit of extra AoE damage on that fight. We did okay-ish. Uh, that tank was 80 item levels above me, so obviously the tank's doing lots of damage. And tanks in general just do pretty good damage when multiple targets are involved. They're just generally bad on single target damage, so... Not much of a surprise there. Uh, let's see. The caster guy. I got freaking targeted for the uh, soul removal or whatever. So I didn't get to do as much damage as I wanted to there. We still did okay. The... Uh, Elemental Shaman was still like 30 something nine levels above me, so it's It's not like we did we didn't we didn't do bad for our item level. Um let's see. For which one was this? Oh the that one. Uh, so the other two DPS got pulled out for the fight for that one, so it's kind of hard to say on that one. You got the little, uh, whatchamacallit, the little thing to kill. Let's see, enemy, is it enemy damage taken? So yeah, the, the tank did a lot of damage to the banner on that. Apparently... It was only me and the tank that killed the banners. 
the first banner died so fast. I thought maybe somebody else attacked it also. But, oh well. The, I guess the banner just doesn't have as much health as I thought. And for the final boss, um, we somehow topped the damage on the final boss, even though it wasn't that I wasn't really mentally uh, ready to do the optimal rotation on that. Um, but with the, uh, the hover ability that the evoker has, you can cast most of your spells while moving. But that part where the thing is like dragging you to the pit or whatever, the black hole, whatever it is, uh, that part you can do relatively well on uh, compared to other cla caster classes that uh, don't have uh, cast while moving kind of capabilities. You compare it to like melee classes and hunters. They don't really care too much about that phase, but casters often have problems. But the direct their evoker uh, can just hover and uh, keep casting. Uh, it's not a uh, you can't cast hover while you're casting another spell um, as compared to something like the uh, elemental shaman can get something called spirit walkers grace I don't know if he used it yeah he used it so that lets them cast while moving similar similar deal but they can cast it during the uh, during their spell cast that they want to start moving on. Whereas if you cast uh, hover while casting a spell, uh, it will uh, well in that case for whatever reason it didn't work, but other times you'll see it'll uh, hover will like cancel the spell that you're casting to cast hover. So the typical scenario is you're casting disintegrate on your target because single target damage boss fight, and then you're like, oh shit, I need to move. Well, you can't cast hover without canceling the uh, disintegrate. So, yeah, that's about how the boss fights went. So, single target damage every time is going to be Disintegrate, is what you're using to spend your essences. Mm, actually, I better talk a bit about big picture how the the devastation evoker plays before we talk about too much about rotation stuff so the devastation evoker you have a few different types of magic essentially in the tree which are based on the different dragon flights uh so there's uh there's like fire magic kind of stuff which is red dragonflight magic uh there's blue dragonflight magic which is like frost kind of stuff basically uh there's green dragonflight stuff which is uh does some healing kind of things um and then there's also bronze uh, this obsidian scales thing is apparently black dragonflight magic. Uh, but there's also some bronze. And I'm not sure if there's any other colors. But, yeah. Your main damage stuff 
is red and blue dragonflight magic. So, uh, for single target, well, so so the devastation evoker has these uh, these essence things, which are spent with uh, a couple different abilities. One is disintegrate, which is your single target channeled damage ability. The other one is pyre, which is an instant cast little AOE fireball thing. So that's how you're spending your essence. Essence regenerates fairly slowly over time. Uh, it's similar to a, uh, a Death Knight's runes. So, um, but I don't know why the UI doesn't very well show exactly when you're getting more essence. It'll show, if you've used all your essence, it'll show as a cooldown for your uh, for your essence spending abilities when you'll have that essence enough essence to cast it um as far as i can tell the essence you don't get like how right uh death knights get three runes regenerating at a time i don't think you get I think you only get one essence regenerating at a time as the evoker. So it's pretty slow to regenerate. Uh, so yeah, that's your essence spending abilities. Now you don't have any essence generating abilities per se. What you have are Azure Strike, which is a instant cast multi-target uh, spell. By default, it's two enemies. It'll hit two enemies. Uh, but with this uh, talent down here on the general evoker tree, uh, it strikes an additional enemy, so it'll hit three enemies. I don't think... Th there's not very much damage on the evoker tree. So I think essentially every devastation evoker is going to get that uh, talent point. Um, so yeah, it hits three enemies. Uh, so like I said, it, it, it doesn't, this doesn't cost essence, but it doesn't generate essence either. Um, and then similarly, Living Flame is a single target fireball thing, which, uh, again, is not a uh, spender or a generator of essence. Um, but what both of these abilities do is there is a passive called Essence Burst. Uh, I don't think it's a talent. I think it's just... Oh, it actually is talents. So, essentially it's from these two talents. Alright, so Azure Strike, the multi-target one, has a 15% chance to cause an Essence Burst, and the other one is your... Living Flame has a 20% chance to go through an Essence Burst. Uh, so, Azure Strike and Living Flame. Uh, since Living Flame has a 1.7 second cast time compared to an instant cast Azure Strike uh, is probably why Living Flame has a slightly higher chance to cause an Essence Burst. Um, but, uh, yeah, generally the extra time it takes to cast Living Flame, uh, I think 
if you're just trying to get a certain amount of essence bursts per second type of thing or per minute I think optimal is spamming Azure Strike compared to Living Flame. Um, but for for single target damage, uh, like the the difference isn't that big. So for single target damage, you're going to still be using Living Flame over Azure Strike. Uh, but what does this Essence Burst do? Essence Burst makes your Disintegrate or your Pyre free. So either of your Essence Spenders becomes free. And um, so, like I said, even though these don't generate Essence uh, because they give you uh, they have a chance to give you a free use of an essence spending ability. They are your filler abilities for multi-target and single target, respectively. Uh, so those are kind of the basic four abilities of the Dracthy Evoker. And then you have two spells that are called empower spells. Uh, so one of them is Eternity Surge, which I don't want to mess up my damage meters. So I'm going to show you me casting it, at least not right now. But it's the one where you like charge it up and it shoots a bunch of little blue magic missile type things at the enemies. Um, but that one does okay damage for multiple targets. It's not amazing. The other one, Fire Breath, is like twice as good. They both have a 30 second cooldown, but, and there's sort of sort of similar as far as uh, how you use them, I guess you could say. But Fire Breath is more damage. It deals damage and a damage over time. And the way Fire Breath works is the more you charge up Fire Breath, the more of the the more it's more single uh sorry it's more instant damage and less damage over time um so charging it up isn't that important whereas the other one eternity surge charging it up just makes it hit more targets so for single target eternity surge isn't very good but the Eternity Surge uh, it's it's still better than Living Flame basically. Um for single target. It's a decent amount of damage. It doesn't cost essence. Uh it's, it's like twice as much damage as the Living Flame. It doesn't give you that chance to uh, it doesn't give you that chance to have the essence burst to have a free disintegrate but like on average it's still better than a living flame in single target so you still use it in single target it's just not very good uh, whereas single target Fire Breath does like twice as much damage as an Eternity Surge. Fire, this is with talents, mind you. Um, Fire Breath multi-target uh, it still does like twice as much damage as an Eternity Surge. So Fire Breath is just super strong. We'll see that going through the actual numbers. Um, but yeah, that's, 
Those are your empower spells, big AoE damage. Uh, I should say decent AoE damage on Eternity Surge, big AoE damage on Fire Breath. And then also you get uh, pretty big AoE damage on this uh, Deep Breath skill. Deep Breath is the one where you fly in the air and do that on the ground. That does pretty good damage. Uh, so, yeah. That one's... The, the other one... The Empower spells have a 30 second cooldown. That one has a 1 minute cooldown. Assuming you get the talent down here to reduce the cooldown by 1 minute. Since it does such good AoE damage, <clears throat> it is definitely recommended you, you get that talent. Uh, okay. So those are the main damage things for the Evoker. We've got a couple other talent ones we need to look at. Um... So, Dragon Rage right here. Erupt with Draconic Fury and exhale Pyres at three enemies within 25 yards. So, Pyre is that uh, Essence Spending AoE damage one, which doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Uh, but three of them... If the enemies that it get casts uh, are all clumped up, that's a decent chunk of burst damage. But more importantly, what Dragon Rage does, this is a two minute cooldown. It'd be super weak if all it did was those pyres. Uh, for 14 seconds, Essence Burst's chance to occur is increased to 100%, and you gain the maximum benefit of Mastery Giant Killer, regardless of target's health. So. We'll talk about the mastery later. The 100% chance for essence burst means that uh, you dragon rage when you, after you've dragon rage when you have that buff up, uh, either an azure strike or a living flame is guaranteed to give you essence burst. So you saw during the dungeon there a dragon rage and then uh zero strike gives me an essence burst which means for single target i'm right i'm doing disintegrate uh, and then a zero strike and disintegrate uh and it just lets you get lots of disintegrates and then before the uh before the Dragon Rage expires, you want to, because you want to make sure you're making the most out of the 100% uh, Essence Burst thing, uh, you want to essentially stock up on your Essence Bursts. Because uh, with the Talent over here, it can stack two times. Um, so, right before it's ending, you want to make sure you have stocked up two Essence Bursts. So that after it's ended, you've you've got two uh, free disintegrates. When we're talking about single target damage, uh, it, it casts pyres at three enemies within twenty five yards. But if there's only one enemy for a single target, it only casts the one. But that's not too important since you're uh, you're mainly doing it for the hundred percent essence burst chance. Uh, when it comes to single part target boss damage. Uh, without using that ability uh, on bosses for the 100% essence burst chance, uh, the evokers, or I should say the devastation evokers, single target boss damage is very weak. So, really got to use that cooldown. Uh, there's also the talent over here, which you don't have to get anything above it to get this talent. Uh, you just get it. 
as soon as you have enough points on the tree to unlock this layer, basically. So this makes your next empower spell instant. So occasionally you want to instant fire breath, then you just kaboom and it gives you maximum like a maximum powered up fire breath instantly very strong although fire breath charging it up doesn't increase the total amount of damage it does it only makes it more instant damage less uh damage over time um so sometimes it's better to use your instant cast on the uh, Eternity Surge instead. Um, because in a multi-target situation, uh, if the enemies are going to live long enough, then you don't need to charge up the Fire Breath. But you do need to charge up the Eternity Surge. So that it hits the multiple targets so in those types of situations the uh an instant cast eternity surge would save you more time than uh save you more time charging it up than the instant cast fire breath okay that's basically it for damage abilities. Unless you get a couple other damage abilities on the tree. So, there's this Firestorm one over here. It's sort of like a... Uh, I haven't actually tried it. Because the, the numbers don't look that great. It's sort of like a mage blizzard or a uh, destruction warlocks firestorm thing something like that where it's a just a relatively long duration aoe damage thing that you cast on the ground um but yeah because the devastation evokers aoe damage is by default very strong uh, I haven't even tried that. Doesn't seem worth trying to commit to any more AoE damage. Whereas over here, Shattering Star is good for single target. It'll hit one enemy unless you have this talent over here. It'll hit two enemies. But it it just increases the damage that the enemy takes from you. By 20% for 4 seconds. Or you could make it for 6 seconds with the talent down here. But uh, I don't think it's worth it. Um, so. Shattering Star will. Uh, just help you out. Just a little bit. For single target damage. Not a lot. The damage that the spell itself does. Is. Not a lot. Uh. It's roughly the same as a living flame for damage, but it, it's instant cast, so slightly less of a hassle. All right. Uh, yeah, so that's basically the description of all my damage abilities. So now we can talk about the damage that I did. Um... So on the AoE first fight, you have Pyre. That's the essence spending little fireball thing. That did the most damage, apparently. Which is about a th third of my damage. 32% of my damage. Um, that includes the triple Pyres that happened from the Dragon Rage. I'm kind of surprised that it was that high. I must have, like, missed enemies with the Dragon Breath or something. Usually, Dragon Breath is also up there. 
Um, Eternity Surge is on their second. Now, Eternity Surge does not actually do that much damage. The thing is, I have a talent down here where the Disintegrate Single Target Essence Spender, the Channeled Beam one, will sometimes cast a little mini Eternity Surge at the target. So, because of that... Um, we are sometimes, we, we are getting extra damage that is being attributed to Eternity Surge, but it's not actually from me casting Eternity Surge. Um, yeah. So, Fire Breath is on there next. Fire Breath's good. Uh... You use it on cooldown, single target or multi-target, doesn't matter. It's just a really strong ability. Possibly overpowered. I really wouldn't be surprised if they nerfed it. Um, because it's just really strong. We'll see more of that later. Um... Wizard Strike is the thing we use um, not only because this is a multi-target fight um, but also because when we Dragon Rage we're using Azure Strike to uh, get ourselves uh, more essence burst things for free Disintegrator Pyres um, so that's why we're seeing it on there. Uh, but yeah, it'll, it'll show up as less damage on a single target fight, of course. But this was a multi-target fight. Uh, Disintegrate's on there. Uh, I did more pyres on that fight because it's multi-target than Disintegrate's. Uh, roughly... Well, so I think the math works out that for three targets, a free disintegrate from essence burst is better than a free pyre. Um, because Disintegrate does more damage than a Pyre. Um, but because Pyre only costs 2 Essence, while Disintegrate costs 3 Essence, because of uh, talent you get fairly early on, Pyre's Essence cost is reduced by 1. Uh, because of that, um, when you're actually spending Essence uh, for your 3 targets, uh, Pyre does more damage per essence than Disintegrate. Uh, also the... Well, I think that's how it works out. It, there's, there's extra... So there's this talent here. Pyre has a 30% chance to flare up and explode again on a nearby target. So that's sort of like 30% extra Pyre damage. Um... And then, so that kind of complicates things on the exact math. And then also the one down here, Disintegrate, has the 15% each chance each time it deals damage to launch a level 1 Eternity Surge at 60% power. Uh, because the Disintegrate ticks four times of damage, that means on average it's going to do 0.6... It has a 60% chance, or it'll do like 0.6 on average of these 0.6 level 1 Eternity Surges. Um, so it's works out to 0.36 times a level 1 Eternity Surge, which is uh, 
0.6k damage, so that times 0.36, uh, so roughly a third, which will be like roughly 2200 damage added on average to a uh, disintegrate. So, yeah, like I said, the exact math is a little annoying to figure out. But I think that works out to, say, 9k or so on this Disintegrate compared to 2600 AoE damage on the Pyre. Yeah, I don't know. If that hits three targets. Yeah. Five by two... Um, 2600 over 2 would be 3900 damage per essence. Disintegrate 9k over 3, 3k damage per essence. I don't know, it's close. It's close, anyways. We got like way off track there. So yeah, disintegrates on there. Uh even so yeah. If if you can hit all three targets, pyre is maybe equal roughly for spending your essence, but like I said, for free when you have the free of either one of them, the disintegrates better for three when there's three targets. There's more favorable for when there's like five or more targets, basically. Probably better for four also. But yeah. Anyways. Uh, and then we got the deep breath. Or, uh, this is the deep breath one. I think I mentioned that earlier. So, does uh, decent damage, uh, particularly in multi target situations, deep breath is pretty good. Single target situations, deep breath does do decent damage. But the problem is, uh, the, uh, the time it takes to do the deep breath, because your character kind of like winds up and then does the little strafing run thing, uh, it takes a few seconds, so it's not... It's a good chunk of damage. It's not really that great in the grand scheme of things, though, for single target. Ah. Uh, but I did use it here. Ah. Uh, it's decent for multi-target. I think... I'm not sure, but it seems like it does more damage... on, like... Bat bosses, but I'm not entirely sure on that. I'm not sure if I used it on all the bosses or not. I did use it on this guy. I had 20k damage. Uh, 23k damage. 14k damage. Uh, 18k damage. So, yeah. 32k damage on a three target fight. Obviously, I did not. Either I didn't hit that very well or something. Because you'd expect that to be. 
a bit higher. But yeah, that was that fight. For the more purely single target fights, we're looking at Disintegrate, top damage every time. Eternity Surge, only up there because of the Disintegrate's chance to cast a little mini Eternity Surge. Otherwise, the damage from Eternity Surge would be pretty low. Because you're still casting it on cooldown. Uh, but it's not as good, like I keep saying, as uh, Fire Breath. Wow, Fire Breath's on there, of course, for single target. What was my sub? Fire Breath on the front of Challengers. Oh, about the same amount. Interesting. Um... Yeah, Fire Breath, Living Flame for single target is so the only you're you're using Living Flame after after you're done with the Dragon Raging because when you're Dragon Raging you're using a Zero Strike to get your essence bursts as fast as possible. The Living Flame isn't used till after Dragon Rage is finished. I don't remember... Did I have Dragon Rage up during this fight? Yeah. So... I don't know how I ended up with that much Living Flame damage. It shouldn't have been that much. Maybe I was just playing it wrong. I don't know. Living Flame shouldn't be that much. Considering the, the fight didn't really last that long. If the fight goes on longer, then... Yeah, you end up having to cast more Living Flames. Uh, when did I cast? Let's see what it says. Five casts of Living Flame. I only did three casts of Azure Strike. Yeah, I played that wrong. Sure. Yep, yep. Yep. So, yeah. Uh, we're done looking at boss damage. Let's see. Overall damage. Managed to keep up with the tank who was 80 item levels above me. So, yeah. Overall damage higher is number one. Disintegrate is apparently number two here. Um, usually I see Fire Breath as number two. It might have just been that specific dungeon. Some dungeons are better than others as far as how well the Hank can grab a bunch of enemies and group them up for you to AOE them down. So, when the tank's able to grab lots of enemies at once, the fire breath does insane damage. Also, part of it could be fire breath not doing as much damage because the enemies are dying too quickly. Uh, so the dot portion of the uh, fire breath is not getting the full effect. So that's a couple options for why fire breath wasn't as high as I sometimes see it. Uh, Eternity Surge on there, like I said, multiple times. Eternity Surge is decent for multi-targets. But it's also adding in the uh, mini Eternity Surge that gets procced from Disintegrates on there. Uh, deep Breaths on there. That's 12% of my damage. That's... Uh... Pretty decent. 
if there's a uh, when there's a area that's got a bunch of uh, non-elite enemies when there's like 10 little dudes running around uh you've definitely got multiple options for uh killing them and of course you'll do lots of damage um, with the uh, deep breath or the fire breath or you could kill them with eternity surge uh, eternity surge is probably the least optimal in that it takes the time to charge when there's a bunch of little guys um if you take too long to kill the little guys, somebody else in your party is going to kill them before you finish your cast. So, uh, yeah. Basically, the, the fastest way to do a bunch of damage to the little guys is to just, like, deep breath right away. Um... Or the uh, tip the scales for the instant cast full power uh, fire breath. Either one of those. We're doing a bunch of fairly quick, uh, significant AoE burst damage. Yeah. Then after that is Azure Strikes on there. Uh, almost 10% of my damage, since you're using that with every time with Dragon Rage to get instant casts for single target disintegrates on bosses. And outside of Dragon Rage, you're using it as your multi-target filler. So, yeah. A decent amount of damage in total from Azure Strike, but it's essentially useless in single target. Or I should say, it's essentially non existent as far as damage goes in single target. We saw over here it was 4% uh, of my. Yeah. Shattering Stars on there. It's a 15 second cooldown for not a lot of damage, so overall damage 4%. Not a lot. Living Flame, only 3% of my damage in the grand scheme of things. So, yeah. Not much as usual. In the overall damage from single target spells, but they are important for uh, boss fights, of course. So, yeah. But yeah, we did uh, pretty good for our item level. Not, uh, not a, I wouldn't say that's like the best showing though for the, uh, Devastation Evoker. This is, uh, other dungeons where if you could, uh, just group up a bunch of elites better than you, uh, then you just blow like all your aoe big cooldowns on it at once and then you do absolutely ridiculous damage um yeah so yeah we've talked about all this damage stuff let's talk about everything else basically so, I don't 
don't want to really go super deep on all the talent tree stuff. But yeah, we'll talk about the important ones pretty quick. Uh, so general evoker talent tree. The right side is generally healing stuff. Um, the left side is sort of damage stuff. But only down here is really where there's actual damage. So you get fire breath damage over time, lasts longer. Your magic damage done is increased by 4%. Zero strike damage is one extra enemy. Fire breath causes your next living flame to strike one additional target per empower level. And this one over here, Sunder. Uh, so basically damage to spell shield type stuff. Absorb shields. Um, and then there's other stuff like stuns and things that are not... They're, they're related to a DPS spec in general, but they're not uh, specifically damage type things. I guess the, up here there's Essence Regenerates 10% faster. I don't know if that's really even worth it per se, but you have such little options as far as damage goes that it feels like you probably should get it. Uh, over here this Living Flame deals 3% more damage and healing. I think apart from those, there's essentially no damage elsewhere on the tree. I think that's all the damage. Well, you want the instant cast uh, empowered spell, of course. But this other stuff is like defensive and interrupts and healing and uh, the ones I think are important are basically this left column down to here, basically. Uh, Obsidian Scales is a 30% damage reduction on a one and a half minute cooldown. That's pretty good. And you can get two charges of it if you get to this talent here. Uh, over here you have a cleanse. You have a uh, fly to an enemy and heal them for 6k. Not a lot of healing, but it's like a movement and healing ability. It's a pretty cool thing to have, I would say. Even though... Uh, you will use it very, very rarely. Uh, similarly here, this is pretty optional stuff. The clear bleed, poison, cure, curse, and disease effects. You're, you're cleansed, but your cleanse that you get up here is only poison. So this, uh... Uh, this removes everything else except for magic fix, basically. So, could be useful in certain dungeons, potentially. I don't know how the Dragonflight dungeons go, so this may or may not be useful uh, in certain dungeons. We shall see. Uh, but I really wanted to get the uh, sleepwalk disoriented enemy. Uh, it's like a uh, it's a uh, little uh, crowd control ability. But the enemies walk towards you. Kind of weird. Uh, pretty silly in PvP though. Um. Yeah, so there's some extra healing stuff in here. I don't think it's quite worth the points. Uh, at least not for PvE concerns go uh, as a Devastation Invoker. Uh, down here, we're getting points 
uh, for hover duration so that you can do more cast while moving stuff if needed during a uh, like a certain mechanics of a boss fight or whatever and hover gains an additional charge down here uh, you got a extra healing stuff you've got the rescue thing to grab an ally and move with them that's pretty nice and this thing gives you a pretty good size health shield when you do that and then this one over here is really nice is uh just when you take damage it gets healed back over time um so it's a pretty good uh defensive cooldown to have so i'm specced kind of a lot into defensive slash healing things on this tree uh which i'm not really using much but the other stuff on this tree i wouldn't really use much either so i'm pretty happy with my build as that goes over here um yeah there's a bunch of stuff on the tree some things definitely feel really undertuned for example azure strike and living flame deal five percent more damage so in the overall dungeon damage azure strike plus living flame combined is rounding up to 13% of my damage. So if you do 5% more of 13% of your damage, that's less than 1% damage increase to your total damage in a dungeon. So it's, uh, those talents seem really weak to me. So you got, uh, Stuff like that in the tree that I think they just really need to, uh, they really need to tune the balancing on it better. Like, Fire Breath deals 40% more damage is really strong. Trying to get from here to here, that talent compared to these other two is by far the best. Um, so, yeah. There's a bunch of things in the tree. The ones that feel the most mandatory are... You really need the Pyre's Essence. Cost is reduced by one. You really have to go over here to get Eternity Surge. Um... And you have to make your way down here to Essence Burst Stacks two times. Uh, I think Essence Abilities reduce the remaining cooldown of Eternity Surge by one second is the better talent out of these two. And I really think Shattering Star is fairly necessary for not doing uh, terrible single target damage uh, up here to get from here to here disintegrate deals more damage is uh, in the grand scheme of things probably better than the uh, deep breath damage but it's fairly close um but because disintegrate damage is more of a single target focus thing this really helps your single target damage not suffer too much but i'd say that these points are better than putting points here uh, this point could go other way somewhere else on the tree but I feel like this 
pretty good. Um, but it's not like a one point wonder type of thing. Uh, let's see. Eternity Surge and Shattering Star hit twice as many targets. Feels pretty mandatory for your Eternity Surge. Uh, otherwise, your Eternity Surge will only hit three targets at fully charged. And that would be not nearly as good. So, yeah. That one seems pretty important. This one for your blue damage increases the damage of your next pyre by 5%, stacking 20 times. Um, pyre is the AoE essence spending ability. So, because you are using your filler is the Azura Strike, which hits three enemies, to... Uh, you're using that as your filler ability. Since that hits three times, that's 15% pyre damage each time you cast that. Um, so that that adds up pretty well. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I never got around to mentioning this talent here with regards to Dragon Raid, so... Casting in a power spell extends the duration of Dragon Rage by 6 seconds. So, you cast your Dragon Rage, and then after you cast your Dragon Rage is when you cast your Eternity Surge and your Fire Breath. So that those will extend the duration of your Dragon Rage. Now, because they just extend it by 6 seconds, you don't want to spend... Four seconds charging up your Eternity Surge and four seconds charging up your Fire Breath in general. So, um, otherwise, you don't get as much value out of this. So, uh, usually. If you have tipped the scales available for the instant cast, like I said, in a multi-target situation, you will use the instant cast on the Eternity Surge, and you will just do the level 1 Fire Breath for the damage over time. It'll just do all the damage over... well, most of the damage over time instead of instantly. Whereas for single-target situations... You will just do a instant eternity surge, and then, well, for single target like boss fights, you'll generally just do a. You you can do a tip the scales. Uh, fire breath if it's off cooldown, preferably after a shattering star. Uh, but if fire breath is not off cooldown. Or sorry, if tip the scales is not off cooldown, if it's on cooldown, then you'll just do the the level one uh, fire breath, uh, so that you can uh, spend more time doing your azure strikes for the essence burst on the uh, during the dragon rage instead of spending extra seconds charging up your fire breath. Um, so yeah, we want the talent down here for deep breaths cooldown. It's reduced by one minute, uh, because that essentially doubles the amount of deep breaths you can do in a dungeon. Pretty great. For single target damage, you really need this talent for the uh, chance to deal a mini eternity surge. And... To get to the talents down here, you have to get this one, where Deep Breath and Dragon Rage give you a Mastery Giant Killer maximum benefit, which I haven't talked about yet. The Mastery Giant Killer is... Increases the damage of your spells by up to 50% based on the current health of your target. Higher health targets take more damage. So, all your tooltips are basically wrong. Your spells will do more damage based on the health of your target. 
Um, so specifically on bosses, you'll see bigger damage numbers. I'm not actually sure. Is this current health as a flat number or is it a percentage of their max health? I don't know. I haven't found that out yet. So. Yeah. But generally you do lots of damage. That's uh, more than the tooltip says. We'll just leave it at that. We deal more damage than the tooltip says. Uh, but specifically for the deep breath and during the dragon rage, we get the maximum benefit out of the mastery. So if you were to stack mastery, those abilities are how you get the most out of it. Anyways. Yeah. So, yeah. Lots of big AoE damage capabilities on the Evoker, Devastation Evoker. Um, not terribly great on single target damage. Uh, like I mentioned multiple times, these other guys in the party were higher item level than me by a significant amount. But, or at least it was uh, f 39 eye levels on the Elemental Shaman and 80 item levels on the uh, Art Warrior. I don't remember the Hunter. This thing says 218. So, 18 item levels on the Hunter. Oh. Uh, so yeah, it's not like we did bad. Uh, we did pretty good for our item level. But I'm not sure exactly how skilled these players are anyways. But yeah. I'm not a fan of the way the single target damage works specifically I, I don't like the feel of using dragon rage um in single target and then having to use a zero strike to trigger the uh instant cast or sorry the free disintegrates um I feel like that feels really dumb Having to use the uh, AoE abilities to do the single target ability. Um, but the uh, the AoE damage of the Devastation of Ochre definitely is very strong. Like I said, would not be surprised if they... Uh, Nerf the fire breath in particular. Yep. 